Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Let's face it, the rainfall pattern in Kenya is becoming unpredictable by the day. Climate is not as predictable as it was in the past. The rains can either be too much or not enough. Irrigation is crucial for you to stay in business. So, what kind of irrigation system do you use? My guess is most farmers in Kenya are used to sprinkler or overhead irrigation. It works if there is enough water. And foliar diseases are not a big problem to your crop. In today's video, I want to talk about the drip irrigation. I will assume you have done the tank installation. I mean you have constructed the right solid platform at the correct height to provide the necessary head or pressure for your project. I want to work with you as I install irrigation system to a part of the farm. I am using materials readily available to me at the farm. I am using old waterways and road curves to install a solid platform. Most tanks will come with the necessary installation instructions that if you follow, you will not cause any damages. For a first timer, it is worthwhile to involve an experienced person when installing these tanks. Now, let me point out something from the start. Some tank manufacturers are kind enough to leave a small area on the lower side of the tank where you should install a connector. Please use this area. Let's start on my desk and learn the basic plumbing skills, the theory. It's not complicated. In fact, if you have interest, it's fun, just like those CBC primary school projects. I will start with a little history of my plumbing experience. I want to show you the various forms of materials used in plumbing works at the farm level. The oldest material I have used for plumbing are the PVC pipes. And these are the pipes I'm talking about. This was the only affordable way for a Kenyan farmer to channel water around the farm. If you wanted to connect these pipes, there were a wide range of cheap fittings like adapters, like this one. We have smooth female end and a male threaded side. We also add elbows, T's, Y's, V's, and so on. For you to join the fittings permanently, one could use a PVC glue. There were also bore valves used to control the flow of the water. These are quite reliable and will last for a long time, especially if they are not under direct sunlight. The main thing I liked about these fittings is that they were sold in small pieces of around 21 feet, I think. And this presented the flexibility in cost if you needed them for just a short project. You could also get various sizes like 2 inch, half inch and many more. I know I am using past tense to describe this piping, but it doesn't mean that the PVC pipes are completely gone, they are still available. And then there were metal pipes, although not as common. These are commonly called GI pipes. These pipes had also various fittings to be used to do various connections. For an example, here I have an elbow to make a corner. And we also have a T to make a junction. Don't worry, as you work with these items, you will get to know their names. And here I have a GI nipple. It has male threads on either sides. Now, the female version of this one is here. This is commonly called a socket tool. It also has threads, but on the inner sides. So this one 
can be used to join pipes with male threaded ends. And I think that is its main job. Now, this one is called a barrel nipple or a tank nipple. There are also a pair of back nuts. Back nuts are used to connect the water tank nipple. Now, the biggest challenge I find with GI piping and fittings is the cost. They are not cheap. And then, there is a high risk of theft. I mean, if you leave even a small piece, in the morning it's gone. People are daring. They will steal even a metal signboard at the police station gate. Anyway, that's life. C'est la vie. Now, there is also another piping option in the market. These are called PPR pipes. They are mostly green in color. Unfortunately, the only reliable way to join these ones is to weld them together with a special tool. PPR piping also come with a variety of fittings too, like a nipple, we have a union, we have a T, we have a socket, and the pipe itself. But as I had said earlier, the major disadvantage is using the welding tool to connect them, meaning you cannot weld them out in the farm without power. Can you see the welded joint? I guess you can't afford to make a mistake with these ones. No second chances. However, I have seen some manufacturers trying to come up with fittings with embedded male and female threaded option for easy connectivity. I think that also works. But mostly what I have seen, PPR are being used in domestic or house plumbing works, far from sunlight. And finally, I get to talk about the kind of piping that's gaining popularity in the farms. These are the pipes I'm talking about, HDPE pipes. These are the common pipes used for irrigation systems nowadays in the farm. These are sold in 100 meter rolls in most hardware stores across Kenya. Some few shops that I know can sell you a half or 50 meters, but most insist on the complete 100 meters. So you'll have to deal with that, unfortunately. And we have various sizes. Here, I have 2 inches. I also have 1.5 inches. And I also have 1 inch. A meter of 1 inch is sold around 70 to 80 shillings, I think. The 1.5 inch is sold for around 110 to 120 Kenya shillings there about. So for one roll of 100 meters, you can do the maths. So let's see how one joins these pipes. Of course, at the farm level, it's what is my main subject today. You can weld these pipes together permanently with a very expensive tool that I will not discuss about now. But also as a farmer, you have an option of using compression fittings. This one is called an elbow. Yeah, an elbow just like mine. And the idea is to make a 90 degree corner, or should I say to negotiate a right angle? Anyway, I was not the best English student in my class. We also have other variations like the male threaded type and the female threaded type too. I'm holding a one and a half inch size and these do not come cheap. I think it's around 400 to 500 Kenya shillings a piece, if I remember correct. We also have teas, various sizes. So the idea of a tea is to make a junction, that simple. Let's say you have one line coming this way and the others living on the other two sides. Now, these teas also come in different types, like we have the female threaded and a male threaded too. As a farmer, you have all the choices. You just need to choose wisely. 
Before I finish, I want to talk about end cap, or what I call the terminator. This is also a compression type, and the idea is to plug the end of the pipe. I think I should show you how these compression fittings work, since these are the items we will be using at the farm for some time. Let's take a part one and see what it's made of. I will use this elbow for demonstration. I almost feel like a child playing with toys, but this is what keeps the plate on the table. These fittings don't need special tools to fasten, just your hands. I think every crop farmer in Kenya should learn these skills. Please pay attention on the order of the internal parts. Let me first talk about this rubber ring or seal. Please, please, don't lose it and ensure it sits back the correct way. Else, the joint will leak non-stop and the fitting becomes useless. I return them in the same order. And then, I want you to take note of this white part. It is split on one side by design and not by accident so that when you tighten the cup this washer will grip the pipe tight the inside part also has back facing threads to help with the grip too they bite the pipe so tight that you cannot easily separate the joint so let me return the washer and show you how to connect the pipe With the blue cap loosened, insert the end of the pipe firmly and then use your bare hands to fasten the joint. No special tools needed. And voila, there you have it, a solid union. The pipe can rotate but cannot come out, of course because of the back facing threads on the white washer inside. I think that's clear now. So, what if I want to connect eco pipes or different sizes of pipes? Well, you can buy a coupling for that task, and there is also a reducing coupling for joining two different sizes, I believe. One last thing how to fix a terminator. Just like the other fittings, you first loosen, insert, and then tighten. And ta-da! That's it. The terminator or plug is simply a blind end of the piping system. Can you see? And with that said, I think that's all she wrote. And now, Let's do the tank connections. I really hope you are not asleep by now. Are you? If you are still awake, kindly, I like you to like and subscribe. So, I want to show you how to come up with these connections. I am sure as a farmer, you will do these connections at least once in your lifetime. Unless you are rich enough to hire some other guy to do this task every time. So, what are the materials needed for you to do this task? A GI nipple, some call it barrel nipple, some call it long nipple, others call it tank nipple. It's one and the same thing. Tomato, tomato, who cares? Anyway, it has male threads on both sides. We also have a pair of back nuts that go together with the tank nipple. They will come together like this. Now, there is something about back nuts I need you to take note of. Can you see the receded face? And then we have a flat side. When it comes to fastening them, the flat surfaces will be on the inner side, just like this. 
we also have a ball valve. Well, I call it ball valve, but professionals in the field call it ball cock. And it's a PVC fitting. And of course, I'm using the female threaded version. Huh? And on both sides. And for this project, I will also use a male compression adapter. It has male threads on one end and a compression assembly on the other end. And I will also need a thread tape too. Actually, this is just a thread seal tape. And finally, of course, the one and a half HDPE pipe itself. So let me demonstrate how to install the fittings. I'll first put all these items aside to have a clear working table. Then I am going to use this box as a model to represent a water tank. This is the inside part and this is the outer part. I want to make a hole here. What do I use? Well, use what is available. That's my motto. Assuming I need a one inch hole, then I find a piece of one inch metal pipe like this one. I place it on hot charcoal or fire for some time. And when it gets red hot, I place it on the tank surface perpendicular like this. It will go in like a knife on butter. Now, for those large scale farmers that have ways and means, they buy a hole saw bit and maybe use a drill to cut a hole. Now, for this demonstration, I will have to cheat my way around a bit. So bear with me. By the way, do you remember the hard place that I had shown you on the tank? designated to make a hole please stick to that i like making it some two inches from the bottom don't go to the edges some of these plastic tanks are expensive but still as i said it's not rocket science you can do it after making the hole it's time to apply thread seal on the threads before I learned about thread seals, a piece of plastic paper used to do the work. You know the tough plastic that they used to pack milk with? That's it. Some plumbers also use plumbers putty or silicone to do this work. But this will not be necessary. Once you're done, take the outer back nut. The flat side facing on the inside of course and thread it all the way on the side with the shorter threads. Just like that. Apply the seal on the exposed threads again. Insert this end into the hole. Take the other back nut with the flat face facing the other nut and tighten on the other side too. Of course, you need more than a pair of hands to do the job. A helping hand will go a long way. The best way to learn these skills is by doing your own projects. You can try even installing a water tap nipple in a 20 liter plastic tin. And once when you are confident, you can then try more riskier jobs. And I know you may be wondering why use plastic seal on the threads? Have you ever tried tightening two metal threads together? like nuts and bolts, and then after some time, when they are rusty, try to loosen them. It's like they weld together. It's not easy. Since you will be doing repairs in your farm, it's in your best interest then to use these thread seals. They also make the joint watertight. Anyway, at this point, I need a plastic ball cock. Now, one thing for young farmers out there, if you find it hard to thread fittings, especially plastic on metal, never force them. Restart the process again 
because if you cross the red, it may leak or even crack and you will end up a sad farmer. Patience is a virtue and it's one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I prefer plastic ball valves over those metal substandard metal gate valves that are out there in the market. They come bearing the quality stamp, but they don't last a week. What a waste of money. Can't believe. After I'm done, I will use a male compression adapter. With experience, you'll be able to do these fittings with your eyes closed. You will even learn how to run the seal clockwise or anticlockwise for best results. You know the biggest challenge with the Kenyan 844 education system was that it was producing half-baked graduates, according to the employers. Too much soft skills and little hands-on skills is what they said. I think they implemented 844 system just halfway. They need results without investing. What do you think? After I apply the thread seal, then I tighten the male adapter to the ball cock. Just like that. See, this one is good now. At this point, I now have the option of fixing my HDPE mainline to go to the farm for drip irrigation system. There are many ways of using different fittings to achieve these same results I admit. It also depends on the cost and your creativity too. I hope you have learned something from this short basic video. Remember to like, share and subscribe. You can also consider supporting my online work by using the link on the description of this video, which I appreciate a lot too. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video and God bless you.